Hey, what's up guys? This is Cody the Coin Raptor, and in today's video, I want to go ahead and talk about what's been going on with Bitcoin in the long term. We're going to break down the long term chart TA, and I'm going to go over some really important metrics that I've found, and then we're going to also talk about what's going on next week. So, before we get to that, be sure to subscribe, be sure to hit that like button, and be sure to follow me on X and on Threads. So, Bitcoin has kind of been mostly going sideways. We've seen in this market, not necessarily a bear market or a bull market, more like a kangaroo market where the price jumps up and comes down and comes up and comes down and mostly winds up staying sideways. If we take a look at the Bitcoin long term and we go ahead and look at the weekly here, we can see that Bitcoin right now is at a very crucial spot of support. And the support level is anywhere from about 25,300 down to, I would say, a little bit here at about 25,000, uh, maybe just slightly below that, but basically below this green candle right here and in this area. I would say that given how incredibly vital this support level is, that if this support level were to actually get taken out, and that's, again, at about this kind of support band right here from about 25.3 to about uh, 25,000, then we could actually wind up seeing Bitcoin move lower into this green box here I've outlined. And the reason why I've kind of outlined this green box is because this is the, an area areas in which we've seen that there has been uh, significant volume in the past. If we overlay this with our volume profile, we can see... Let me zoom out here, and then we can go ahead and see the fact that uh, the next level of a historical volume is here at about 22,000 here at the, the next highest level is about 22,000. And that's kind of where I would expect the, the, um, the bottom part of this range to go. So this is just my estimation of where I think Bitcoin could go if this support level gets taken out. I'm going to be watching very closely to see if this support region is taken out here. And the the whole idea here is if this support region gets taken out, then we can come back here into this this next support area right here. Now, I think it's also too important to, to point out that we're at about the 200-week moving average support right now. Uh, we're we're at uh, 25,748, whereas the 200-week moving average support level is at about 25,600. This level has always been incredibly crucial to Bitcoin throughout its history. If we go ahead and we pull it back and we take a look at the long term for the 200-week moving average, we can see that it barely spends any time below this level, except uh, I would say in the past year or two, it spent a, a fairly significant amount of time below this level. But historically, it normally doesn't, coming all the way back here to about 2015. And right now, it's acting as a very crucial support level. So if this gets taken out, then we could wind up, we could definitely see lower prices. But this is kind of important to put it into proper text of what's going on, I think. And in a previous video, I talked about the that about the fact that this is a seasonally weak time for Bitcoin normally. And if we actually take a look at our volume candles here at the bottom, what we can see is the fact that uh, on the weekly, most of the days, in fact, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, of the last eight weeks, they've all been red apart from one week. And it just kind of shows you that the selling pressure on Bitcoin right now is, is incredibly uh, strong. And the market remains depressed over the last two months. And the reason for that is that Bitcoin is going through a seasonally weak period right now. We saw a red July. We saw a red August. And currently, we're seeing a red September. Now, um, it's entirely possible that we do wind up seeing more losses in September. And then we see a very strong recovery in October. Usually, when we have very strong losses in September, it's also proceeding, uh, it's proceeded by strong gains in October, except for, um, I'd say, here in about 2014. That wasn't the case. But if you look at something like 2019, in which it went down 13%, we had a 10% gain in October. In September, when it went down 7%, you had a 39% gain in 2021. In 2020, when it went down 7.5%, it went up 27.7% in October. Uh, so that next month. So Bitcoin's in a historically kind of weak uh, area right now. As long as we can kind of make it through 
September, I think we're going to wind up being good. I think Bitcoin is going to recover uh, as soon as it gets out of this month, but it's impos entirely possible that we could wind up seeing more selling to push us below uh, below this vital support. And if that's the case, then we can wind up here, I think, somewhere in this green box. But I also want to go ahead and point out the fact that uh, the dollar index has been incredibly strong lately. And people have been talking about the dollar index or the strength of the dollar versus other currencies. And the dollar index right now is at a point of resistance, okay? So the dollar index tends to trade inversely with Bitcoin, and right now it's at a point of resistance at about 105 or so. We're going to see if we get a breakout above these levels, and if we do, there's even more resistance here at about 105.27 or so in this region right here. Now, I, I'd be looking for this level to hold, um, and, and potentially push higher if the Fed keeps raising rates, which is possible. And I would also expect that if it does go past this resistance level, then we could see it go all the way back up here again to 107, 108. And that would also put pressure on Bitcoin as well. So I don't want to just be negative on Bitcoin, but I'm trying to lay out the reality of what's going on. The current macroeconomic environment is extremely challenging and the, the strength of the dollar is rising currently. Now, I also want to go ahead and put this into context with our liquidity maps, and especially if Bitcoin gets below that 25,000 region, we can see there's a huge amount of long liquidity below that level, and they could potentially wind up getting liquidated, and the price could wind up pushing uh, down even further from there. So this, all this right here would be fuel to the fire if Bitcoin does breach that uh, vital 25,000 level of support. There's just... There's all this, this this long liquidity down here going all the way back to about 22,700 is one of the largest areas of that long, uh, long liquidity. So that's something for us to watch out for as well. Now, I also want to go ahead and talk about the exchange reserve, as I usually do. The exchange reserve in the past couple of weeks, we've actually seen a rise in the, uh, in the number of Bitcoin on the exchanges. And it seems like uh, this is kind of a result of all the selling that we've talked about. Right now, it's gone from a low of about 2,039,000 here to a level of about 2,053,000. So we're starting to see some inflows of coins to the exchanges. Now, if we go ahead and, and look at the profitability of these sellers, we can see that according to the SOPR, the spent output profit ratio, that they are selling currently at a loss. So what we're seeing right now is a lot of panic selling going on for Bitcoin. And it, it seems to be uh, short-term and long-term holders right now are selling at a loss currently. I also want to go ahead and talk about where we are in the cycle as well. Bitcoin's having is uh, approximately 219 days away. And if we go ahead and overlay this onto a realized price chart, what we can see is that uh, we are fairly late in the cycle and Bitcoin doesn't tend to slip below. What we have is the realized price here in purple. It doesn't tend to slip below that level this late in the cycle. Okay, so it's very, it, it's very unusual if Bitcoin does get to that level. And right now the realized price is about 21,300. I think that would be very strong support if we ever did get anywhere in that area. I think that we'd see a very strong bounce, a very strong reaction as dip buyers come in and push the price even higher. But it would be very unusual right now for Bitcoin to slip below that level. So if you guys want a worst case scenario or an Armageddon or Black Swan, I do think that it's going to wind up being at the realized price at about 21,300, but I still think this is an incredibly unlikely possibility. We'd have to see a we'd have to see a major Black Swan event, a major crypto hack or an exchange going down, some some kind of a bad news with Binance would have to wind up being something like that, the catalyst for it to move down to that level. But I'm just putting that out there. That way you guys know, you know, where the bottom, the actual final bottom, I think, would be uh, in this current kangaroo market that we're in right now. I also want to go ahead and talk about the Bitcoin Poil Multiple. Now, this is it can be thought of like a tool for measuring minor profitability. Minor profitability right now is at 0.87, and this level is actually not too bad. I mean, if it comes down here into this green area, that's a level I would start to be concerned about with the with, with miners and minor profitability. But right now, it's kind of more in the middle of the range. This is an area that we saw 
uh, before, back in about a March of 2022, in this region right here, April 2022. So it's not it's not terrible. Uh, it's not as high as it was back in in July, but um, so far it looks like the miners are actually doing fairly well. And in fact, if we Look at the Bitcoin hash rate. We can see the hash rate is very close to all-time highs yet again. And the hash rate has been just on a relentless march upwards. And it, it really seems like miners right now are not doing too poorly. They're bringing more rigs online. The rigs that they're bringing online are more efficient. And as such, they shouldn't be as inclined to sell. And if we go ahead and take a look at our Bitcoin average transaction fees, it's at about a it's at about a dollar forty right now. I know I've sent Bitcoin recently to one of my wallets, and I know I paid probably about eighty three cents or so a transaction. It was pretty crazy. It's very low right now for the transaction fees. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and talk about what's going on for the rest of the week. Okay, so. We're over here on Market Watch's economic reports calendar. And Monday, we don't have anything. Tuesday, we don't have anything. Wednesday, very important core CPI and CPI year over year. Okay. This is absolutely vital. We could wind up seeing a massive spike in volatility on Wednesday, depending on how the CPI comes in. Now, the forecast right now is expected to be 3.6, so we'll see if we wind up coming in below that number or not. And the core CPI is expected to come in at 4.3%, so expect there's gonna be some major volatility on Wednesday as these numbers are released at 8.30 a.m. Eastern time. Thursday, we have the initial jobless claims. We also have core PPI or the producer price index, okay? Those are going to be also very important because the Fed's looking at CPI, they're looking at PPI, and they're determining whether or not they have to keep raising rates. And if they raise rates, it's bad for Bitcoin. And then if we go ahead and take a look at Friday, Friday, we're going to have some import prices, industrial production, and capacity utilization. So uh, there's not as big of an event on Friday, but the major events that we're looking at here are going to be on Wednesday and also on Thursday, and that likely will drive Bitcoin's gains or losses for the week. All right, so that's all I've got for you guys today. Let me know what you guys think about some of the information that I've laid out here. Are you bullish or bearish in the long term of Bitcoin, or maybe you're just bearish in the short term, bullish in the long term? Uh, I think this is wind up. This is going to be just a more of a kangaroo type of market, and we'll wind up seeing some ups and downs in the coming months ahead of the having. But my plan, as always, especially if we get into this green box here, is to buy. I will be a heavy buyer at these levels, especially if we do see another major dump. But let me know what you guys think below and what your plan is to ride out this current turbulence that we are facing. All right, that's all I've got for you guys today. I'll catch you guys in the next video.